It's all over in Washington. The worst team in the NBA beat the Sacramento Kings tonight, 109 to 102. That's twice this year. Once at home against the Pistons when they were the worst team in the NBA. They have been surpassed now by the Wizards, who have a better record than the Pistons. That is two times this year that the Kings have lost to the worst team in the NBA. It's embarrassing. Okay. It's embarrassing. There's just no other way. I don't care if you played in Toronto last night. I don't care if you played on the moon last night. You just lost to a team that entered play with 11 wins and you only scored 102 points. Pathetic. Ryan and Sacktown. I don't know what else to say. That's pathetic. It is pathetic, Grant, but it's a deal. That's what the Kings are. They're a play-in team. If anything, this is what this game reinforces. Here's, I tracked the possessions that mattered in this game, Grant, and here's what the Kings did down the stretch. They were down six points with a minute 30 left. They go missed three, missed three, turnover. The worst team in the NBA goes, they turn it over, the Kings get a steal, they make it two, offensive rebound, and then a dunk. I mentioned this, I mentioned this a couple of days ago, and I'm going to say it again. I, I get the love for Keon Ellis, okay? I, uh -huh. I get it. I get it. But the reality is that you are nowhere near as good of an offensive team without Kevin Herter. Now, I understand that her is not having the best of years. All right, I, I get that. But you have now completely changed the identity of the Sacramento Kings, which, by yes. the way, over a long stretch, we don't have a big enough sample size. Might be okay, okay? I mean, it might be okay. Sure. But, but the point is, and Jerry always talks about this, there's something that hovers over the arena in every gym in the world and is called the scoreboard, okay? And right now, the Kings offensively, are nowhere near as good offensively as they were without Herter. We don't talk about Trey Lyles enough, Ryan. I think okay. that his loss is significant, and you still don't have Sasha Vizankov. Look at the three-point shooting tonight, okay? Look at the three-point shooting. You now don't have that threat from the perimeter other than Malik Monk, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe Fox on some games, maybe Keegan Murray some games. You don't really, you're not a three point shooting team anymore. No, no, you're not. You're an inside out team. And I think Mike Brown, since the playoffs last year, that's why we kept hearing physicality, physicality, physicality. Because they got pushed around a little bit. But prime example tonight, Grant, the Kings stink it up all night, as you said, from three, fourth quarter. They hit five, I believe they're five of eight midway through the uh, fourth quarter. But at the end of the game, Grant, especially with a game like this, the shot selection from De'Aaron Fox, that three-pointer was a piss-poor shot. And with the way this team's been grinding it out and playing hard, and it's not a De'Aaron thing, it's whoever takes that shot. I but agree with you. If you're grinding it out, how do you look your teammates in the eye with that yeah, one? It was, it, it was it's, stupid. It's, it's bad basketball IQ. It's everything lazy. else that I want to talk about. You are absolutely correct. Fox was not good tonight. He was 10 of 31. Uh, he was 5 of 15. It's not that he was tired. He didn't play a lot of minutes last night. No. He just had a bad game. And 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 what do we say about the Kings? The Kings go as the Aaron Fox goes. I know Sabonis yes. is the best player, and I get that. He had another double-double. But the reality is that when the Aaron Fox does not play well, the Kings normally lose. That is the reality. And um, it's all that more important with what we talked about at the top with no herder because that offensive option – that or that insurance plan you may have had on the bench in the playoffs with him is not there anymore. So you absolutely have to have five starters. I'm not going to say Excel Grant. They got to be really good on offense. I, again, the the identity of this team. And by the way, I think we can just assume Kevin Herter is not coming back based on what I read. Okay, with the uh, you know with his injury. I mean, and when it, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a while. I believe. The fact that they're evaluating what the best option is going forward yep. for the treatment, that, that tells me that you're absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, you. So I want to talk more about Keon Ellis, okay? Yeah. I like sure. Keon Ellis. He, he provides something that this team desperately needs. But he's an offensive liability. And by mm -hmm. that, I mean 
He's not when you your 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 two guard in the NBA is one of the is probably the second most important position on the floor. The way the game is played today, you could you could debate that, but the I guess the point I'm saying, and Jerry yeah. always talks about this. The name of the position is called the shooting guard. Okay, the Kings now have a starting two guard who doesn't shoot, who's not an offensive player. Yeah, Someday. he can lock you up defensively. Yeah, he can get the 50-50 balls. He can do all the intangibles. But the reality is, Keon Ellis is not a starter in the NBA. He is a role player. He's a bench player and and, and could be very good in that role. He's not really your prototypical starting two guard. He's just not. He, he, he And, and we, you have to understand that. And I'm not ragging on the guy. I'm not. He provides a lot of good things for this team. But he's not a starting two guard in the NBA. No, but I think what Keon Ellis is, and I think why fans have gotten so excited about him, is because everybody knows the team needs that player. They need somebody to play that role. So finally, somebody is working out in that role, which is Keon. But I guess speaking more to that, you see Kessler come in tonight. And that role, right? You're bringing somebody in three and D change the momentum where it doesn't show up on the stat sheet. And that just says what the Kings need. And they're trying to do it as you just put very well with guys that are not at their skill level NBA guys yet to be started. Well, well, the other thing that it does, it makes your bench less effective. Okay. So you other than Malik Monk without Trey Lyles, Without Keon Ellis, and without and when I'm, when I'm saying without, I'm talking about bench players. I know I know yeah. Keon's elevated himself now to replace Herder, but the point sure. is, without Lyles, who I think we need to talk about more, without Ellis, who now starts, and without Vizankov, who again he wasn't playing great, but he's a threat. To, you don't really other than Malik Monk, who who can you count on coming off the bench? You can't. It, it's going to be. What you have to count on for a team like this is the looks that you're going to get, not the personnel. You have to have the guys in the right spots like a Davion where he can excel with the spot up three. And that's where the technicality of what the Kings do, the the level, the bar goes so much higher, Grant. Hey, don't forget about the weekend brunch, the weekend prime rib at Bennett's three locations, Sacramento, Roseville, and the Westside Grill in Rockland. If you go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com, you can make a reservation and more. Don't forget 60 different types of wine available by the glass, prime seafood and steak at Bennett's. You will love it. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. I'm shocked that the Kings lost this game tonight. I'm not surprised. I'm shocked. There's a difference. And I, I'm very full aware that the Kings lost to the Pistons this year and lost to Charlotte and lost to Portland. I, I get all of that. But you're now at the stretch drive of the season. And you look at the standings just like I look at the standings. Yeah. And you're playing a team that is pathetic. Let's just call it the way it is. Pathetic. Okay? And you lost 109 to 102. Why should I have any confidence in this team? Like, I've been saying that since October. I don't well, have any confidence Grant, in this what's team. What's your definition of confidence? What's your definition of confidence? That they are going to go out and play well on any given night. I don't feel that way with this team. I, I just feel don't. better about it now. I feel much better about it now than I did 10 what, games ago. I don't. I, what, you, look at who they've lost to over the last 10 games. Well, okay, but but we're that's where I go back to what level are we looking at him? Are we looking at the micro or the macro? Because if we're at the macro, the last 10 games have been really good. They've had some sprinkled bad losses. I get it, tonight's loss, but they held very good teams to right around 100 points many times during this stretch. And to me, Grant, this becomes a race to 100, and the question becomes how do the Kings embrace that with the personnel they have right now? I, I disagree with you. I, I'm not, to me, there's no difference in the last 10 games. Maybe numerically, it's a little bit different, but they have some really bad losses in the last 10 games. And I just can't ignore the bad losses that they've had. Okay. Chicago, very bad loss. Houston, who's not a bad team, but still at home, bad loss. You needed overtime to beat a bad San Antonio team, right? Yes. You lost to the Knicks. Good team, but without Randall. You. Yes were taken to the wire 
by a bad Memphis team to the wire. To, they, okay. they, that you were lucky. You were lucky to beat Memphis. And then you just lost to the worst team in the NBA. I disagree with you. I don't see any improvement at all over the last 10 games. To me, it's the exact same trend Grant. that we've been seeing all year. No, they no. Okay, Grant. That, no, it's not the same trend. Your, your, your net rating does not triple for the season. Your defensive rating doesn't go from the bottom third to the league to the middle of the league. I believe it's 15th right now coming into tonight. So, yes, we're seeing the same trends with the team, but fundamentally the way this team's going to win basketball games has completely changed. They are not outscoring teams anymore. No. If you want to see 130, you're not watching the right game. Well, you're right about that. You're 100% correct. They're not going to outscore teams. And this team, you know, we're making Keon Ellis out to be too good. First of all, you know, he's not, he's not Michael Cooper. All right. He's Keon Ellis. And I, I think that we're putting him on a pedestal that is not fair. I think he has made the team different. And you could argue maybe a little bit better. But the way the NBA is – the, the Kings aren't the Knicks, Ryan. All right? They're not going to no, lock you not. up to be able to win games. The only way the Kings are going to win is by outscoring you. Now, what I like to see – a trend where it's a little bit less offensively and a little bit more defensively? Yes, I would. And maybe you're getting that. But the reality is that other than De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis, and Fox not every night but most nights, who can you count on offensively? You can't count on Keegan Murray. He's been too inconsistent. You can't count on Harrison Barnes. He's like a box of chocolates. You can't yeah. – Keon Ellis isn't going to score. You can count on Malik Monk almost every single night. Other than that, Ryan, who can you count on for your offense? Uh, you nailed it. You really – Grant, and that's why I'm – the point is, this team – let's go back two seasons. This team was never okay. built to outscore people. They weren't. When Correct. Mike Brown was hired, defense, defense, defense. We haven't seen big offensive moves – despite the Kings having the best offensive rating in the history of the NBA last year. They really didn't upgrade, Grant. So they're hanging their hat on something else, and I think this is it. So all I'm trying to say, this team isn't winning a championship year this year, but this team's right. a legitimate play-in team this year for all the yes. reasons we've talked about. Yes, I, I, and, and I said this at halftime. I think the Kings are a good team. I think they're a good yes. team. I don't think they're anything more than a good team. Uh, and I also believe that who's ever seven and eight this year, because it's either going to be in all likelihood, and we'll talk about New Orleans in a minute, it's either yeah. going to be Dallas, Phoenix, or Sacramento. Two of those three teams in all likelihood are going to be seven and eight. And whatever two teams you name out of Sacramento, Dallas, and Phoenix, they're all good teams. Now, Brandon Ingram got hurt tonight for New Orleans as they lost to Orlando. That could have a significant impact the rest of the way in the Western Conference, because without Brandon Ingram, the Pelicans drop off significantly. Significantly, and you can't. Uh, yeah, exactly. There's nothing more to say about that. So watch them. The Kings' luck continues. So it, it really becomes. Yeah, it doesn't those matter dollars. if you don't beat bad teams. It doesn't matter if you don't. Okay, but we know that that's part of the formula. That's part of yeah. the charm. The Kings stink this year. It's either the Kings or it's the Kings with an A. I expect the Kings to go out and beat Orlando on Saturday because that's just the way they play. But you just said they lose to bad teams. So why do you expect them to win a good team? I just they can't outscore. Their, their pattern this year is after they have a stinker, they normally play very well in their next game. Yes, they normally do play very well. But this game, they don't have Trey as of right now. Well, no, Trey's gone. We know that. Yeah. He's being reevaluated in another week and a half. Kevin, we've talked about Sasha. Attention goes to him, Grant. Yeah, but you can, can we expect a guy that hasn't played in almost two months to just step on the floor and be effective against a very good mm. team? I don't think so. Not necessarily, but I mean, at some point you got to get him out there and yep. get him ready yep. if he's going to have a stretch run. So that would be a yep. positive. Another body for Mike Brown, I guess. Grant, yep. here's my thing. You saw Malik Monk in the first half. There's a video floating around the X right now where he rallies the unit that's on the floor. And yep. um, it kind of got him going, whatever. Kessler comes in, but then you see Fox bickering with the officials. The Kings put out, or NBC, NBC California puts out a tweet. 
of him arguing with the ref saying, oh, De'Aaron didn't like that call. Putting attention on that. So I guess the question becomes, where is the leadership on this team and who the hell is going to rein it in? Because it seems like there's a little bit of a power struggle there. Yeah, I think that's a fabulous question. And I don't have the answer to that because it's apparent there's a void there. And I think there's been a void all season. I am not a fan of arguing with the officials. Anyone that has watched me over the years and listened to me knows how I feel about that. And unfortunately, you're going to see it a lot next week when Luca comes in with the Mavs because he's the worst in the league. But I, yeah. I don't like what Fox has become uh, complaining all the time. And you mentioned this to me the other day, and I think you made a very good point. How many baskets have the Kings given up because De'Aaron's late getting back on defense because he's chirping at the official? A decent amount. Um, yeah. he'll, at times on his back. I mean, it doesn't help when your point guard's the last guy up the court. Usually should be the first. Can't, can't have it. And hey, here, here, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go. No, I want to hear about, uh, let me guess, Newark's plumbing or gold? <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> this is about Sunrise Landing oh. and Calusa Sunrise. Well, I got to keep you on your toes uh, from Blazona Development. That's right, Sunrise Landing in Calusa with uh, six models to choose from. No Melaroos, no homeowners. If you go to calusasunrise.com, you can check out one of these beautiful models. Uh, really good uh, area close to major arteries such as I-5 and Highway 20. It is Sunrise Landing in Calusa. And if you go to calusasunrise.com, you'll get all the information you need. That is calusasunrise.com and Sunrise Landing. Kings lose to the worst team in the NBA tonight, and uh, they drop a valuable game. Uh, the Pelicans did lose, so they failed to pick up any ground on New Orleans, and they will now sit back and cry because that's about all you can do after a game like this when you lose 109 to 102 and they will be rooting for the utah jazz who are in dallas tonight taking on the mavs and then the mavs go and play utah the night before they play sacramento and then of course we know that there are two games next week with the kings and the mavs right now at the half the mavericks lead the jazz 53 to 42. The other final, we told you the Magic, who the Kings play on Saturday, beat the Pelicans 121 to 106. No word yet on the uh, injury to Brandon Ingram, but he did not look good leaving the floor. He didn't look good, but uh, either did Shingoon. And no. uh, I am no doctor. It looks similar in terms of a hyperextension. So fingers crossed that's the case because the uh, other is a worse alternative, Grant. Yeah. So uh, Sacramento right now uh, will, again, wait for the outcome. I, I've, I've said this a couple of weeks ago. I think the Mavs are the team that you got to be concerned about, not as much Phoenix. And I say that because the uh, Suns have such a difficult schedule where the Mavs have a relatively easy schedule compared to the Kings and the Suns. So, you know, if Dallas wins tonight, they're going to elevate themselves into sixth. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Those those two games next week, Ryan. Big. Yep. And, and Grant, for those that didn't hear it, I thought you had a great take about possibly resting the starters against Philadelphia to gear I up would. for those two games. I would. I, I think it's I, a good I, idea. I mean, you you the Mavs are the two biggest games of the year to date, and I would since I would really think about. Resting my starters. Absolutely. That's I really would. Point. I got another question about the rotation. So uh, going back to the conversation we were having about Mike Brown trying to find those combinations right now. Yeah. Don't you feel like with uh, the style of play changing and normally not seeing this in the latter quarter of an NBA season, don't you feel like for it to have some bite behind the bark, Mike Brown needs to start subbing people out and you know if guys aren't doing stuff pulling them out regardless of your name unless unless you're in the last couple minutes you get it but things I think to it's me a too late for that i think with 13 I, 14 13 games left i think it's a little too late for that or 14 but, games whatever it is but you got to do something because you lost two guys two guys that were firmly in your rotation so i just yep. think there could be minutes up for grabs for guys right now that could bleed into the playoffs 
Um, I don't think that rotation solidified whatsoever. Well, and that's 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 one of the problems with the Kings. If your rotation is not solidified with uh, three weeks to go in the season, that's an issue. Now, that is part of that, issue. Ryan, part of that, Ryan, is the injuries that we've talked about. But you still you still should have a really good feel of the next man up and what they can do and what they can't do. No, totally. I think just the next man up, I think some of those guys are being asked to kind of play tweeners at times on positions when the Kings go small because of the Lyles hole. But yeah, you're right. You are right. Um, you know, I hope Orlando, I hope the weather's really bad in Orlando and Malik hates the city. Hates it. Uh, we got to stop talking about the refs every time the Kings lose and Fox not getting to the line. I'm so tired of it. Yes, there are times when we can talk about the officiating, and I'm with you on that. But you can't talk about it after every loss. You just can't. You know, you just can't. I mean, um, we got to move on from that. The Kings didn't lose the game tonight because of the officials. They beat themselves tonight. And I, yeah. I'm i sorry, I'd like to give credit to Washington, but I can't give credit to a team that only has 11 wins coming in and who had, who had lost 18 of 20 games. The Kings beat themselves tonight. 21 of 23, too, coming into was tonight. Was it 21 so of 23? Is that what it was? 21 of 23. Pretty rough. So think Pretty about rough. that. Think, think about that for a minute. Think about that. The, the Kings lost to a team that had just lost 21 of 23 games. 21 of 23 games. It, it, it's, it's rough, but it's the story of this year. Hey, thank you to all of you who just got the channel over seven thousand we appreciate it hit that qr code if you're not subscribed already uh you'll get some premium content too um some rant sometimes grant some play yeah, by play absolutely. with turtles i i I, yes. I love it so go check it out am i absolving mike brown for this team's inconsistency where did you hear me say that i haven't said that do you are you making stuff up or what i think everyone uh is held accountable when you have games like this and I think it does start with your head coach. Absolutely. So, no, I'm not absolving him of anything. But I'm also not ignorant and naive to the fact that he's down a starter and down a uh, key reserve. And I and and that has all happened in the last week. And I just can't ignore that or the last two weeks. You know, and Kevin Herter just went down in the last game or two games before the road trip. So I can't just, like, ignore that. You know, I mean, that, that, yeah, other teams have injuries too, and it's got to be the next man up. But as Ryan was saying, your rotation is going to be different from the game, game, the game right now, it's just the way it is. It's the way it is. And uh, the Kings dealt with it, believe it or not, more injuries this year than they did last year, if you haven't been paying attention. But I get it. I get where it comes from. I mean, Grant, the Wizards should not be outscoring you 60 to 34 in the paint. Should nope. No, they should not. Hey, folks, uh, in the market for a puppy, I got good news for you. Fosters and Paws, a group of animal advocates, right now, as of uh, 48 to 72 hours ago, had 20 puppies available for adoption. And they expect to have up to 70 puppies available in the next couple of weeks. Uh, hey, there it is. Fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. If you want to adopt a puppy, uh, get in touch with fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. A group of animal advocates, they do a fabulous job. And again, puppies available right now. The Kings, uh, Orlando is next and the Magic are rolling. They just yeah. throttled a very good Pelicans team tonight. And uh, the Kings are going to have a, uh, they're going to, I'll tell you this right now, the Kings are going to have to play in a game to beat the Orlando Magic on Saturday. Well, they're going to have to play an A defensive game too because yes. they, it's going to be a defensive matchup. You thought the Knicks was one, Orlando third in the NBA in defensive rating. So yep. um, the Kings are going to have to do those little things right, Grant, like the free throws, which were a little bit better tonight, much better tonight. Um, but the the taking care of the ball, it's been a problem lately, especially with the second unit. Are you noticing anything specifically? Um. Yeah, I think it just falls back into guys are, are now playing with different rotations. I don't think they're fully in sync uh, because of the injuries and the mix up. You know, you don't have Lyles. You don't have uh, Keon Ellis. Now he moves up. I just they look out of sync yeah. to me. I, and again, I, I want to go back to this, though. Who do you think other than Monk you can rely on for offense from the bench? 
If I had to pick one name out of the hat that I could rely on off the bench, you guys are going to all laugh at me. The name is actually going to be Alex Len. I think if you played Alex Len enough down low, he could get you eight to 10 points consistently off the bench. It's just he plays a little bit too sporadically. And Grant, it's not flashy, but eight to 10 points with a team that's only scoring 102 is a lot. Yeah, I agree with you. But who do you take off the floor? You just, that is where, if you want to look at the coaching staff, that is where you have to get creative of when you play your three guard lineups and when the other team is substituting, you got to try to find your advantages. Uh, Orlando, by the way, is even, or they're a, a game back in the loss column of the Knicks. They have one more win. The Magic are fighting for the fourth spot in the East and the third spot is very much within their possibility. This is a big game for the Magic, and it is a it big is. game for Sacramento because in all likelihood, the Kings are going to enter play out of the top six. And if the Kings were to lose Saturday, if your next three games are Philadelphia, Dallas, and Dallas, and you know the yeah. Kings do not match up at all with Philadelphia, even without Embiid. We saw that in Philadelphia earlier in the season. All right. Well, Maxie killed them. Killed them. I was just going to say, Maxie, that is the problem because you saw what the Wizards did tonight to the middle of the court to the Kings down the paint. They slashed them. So Maxie will have a field day if they spread the Kings out like the Wizards did. Tonight. Yeah. All right. Again, the Kings lose uh, tonight uh, a bad loss to a team that is the worst record-wise, in the NBA. Hey, if you have any issues with plumbing, I've got the answer for you. New Works Plumbing, they will be there with their 24-7 service. They've got a fix for you. Just go to sacserviceplumbing.com or call the number on your screen. That's New Works Plumbing. They've got a fix for you. They are awesome. And again, problem middle of the night, no issues. They'll be there for you with their 24-7 service. That's New Works Plumbing at sacserviceplumbing.com. I don't think they could have fixed the King problem tonight, though. Um, no, but they were there for me, Napes. Uh, they were here within 45 minutes. New York is it. the best. Give them a call. I'm going to give that, you. Man. I'm going to give you and the Kings fans something to chew on. We've talked about how the Kings want to play physical basketball and how that needs to translate to Orlando. The Orlando Magic, 25th in fouls in the NBA. If the Kings come in and play a little physical and they can get to the free throw line, it's going to benefit them when they're in the land of Disney Napes. All right. Very interesting. That's a good stat to keep in mind. And don't yes, forget uh, all the coverage on Saturday for the Kings and the Magic, uh, beginning with the pregame show, uh, halftime with Jerry uh, and the uh, postgame show. But Ryan, what did we say before the Kings played Memphis? I said it, and you agree with me, and I think a lot of people agree with me. The three games beginning with Memphis were must-win games. You yes. barely beat Memphis. I mean, you were lucky to beat Memphis. Let's just call it the way it is. You were very lucky to beat them and send the game to overtime. You, you jumped on a horrible Toronto team, and you played another horrible team tonight, and they jumped all over you. So, I mean, there are no more easy games left, relatively speaking, on the schedule. There, no. there just aren't. And, may, and maybe maybe we all look at that as a good thing because the Kings do play to the level of their competition. So may, maybe that is a good thing. I, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. And again, if you want a bright spot, only 109 points they allowed to Washington. It wasn't 130 to the worst team in the league. I, I know they scored more, but a bright spot. And also, Grant, I didn't tell you this yet, but I, we are 65 followers away from 1,000 on the King's court. And when we hit a thousand, I'm going to announce some new giveaways that are going to be huge and also some big events coming up. So hit the QR code, go check it out. And Grant, just for you, today's episode, I only gave one stat because I know how much you love analytics. Well, uh, the stat that I'm looking at right now is 109 <laughs> and 102. That's the stat I know. I'm looking it's at. A, and, 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 I know, and, I know. All kidding aside, you know what I'm looking at, Ryan? I'm looking at the three-point shooting. That's the one thing I look at with this. It's the first thing I look at every time I look at a box score with the Kings. I look at three-point shooting because, generally speaking, there are exceptions. That tells me, before I even look at the score, Ryan, if I look mm -hmm. at that three-point category, that pretty much tells me whether the Kings won or lost the game. 
Well put, Napes. And Napes, here's what I'm going to say. 39, I think, might be, with the way the team's playing, a little bit high, a little higher than they want. Maybe, maybe 35. But what's the number of makes that you need to see for this team to win? Things change now without Lyles and without Herter. You know, I'd Mm -hmm. have to reassess that. That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Uh, so I'm going to look more at percentage, but yeah, it's a very good question in terms of makes. I'd have to reassess that. I, I so I, right now I don't have an answer for you. What about you? I don't have an answer either. But you and I all season we've kind of put together these landmark stats or these stats, so to say, that we put in stone that when we see them or we see them, the Kings win usually. Yes. And so what you just said, we need to figure that stat out because we've yep. been pretty much on this year, double digit steals. Three to one assist to turnover ratio, uh-huh. free throws. Uh, what 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 would we say free throws? Obviously, eighty percent. We haven't really addressed that. Yeah, I would, if eighty percent would be fine. If if you could be eighty percent, that would be fine. I would take that right now. There you go, eighty percent. I would say attempts over fifteen. Attempts. Over yeah, yeah, 15. oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, which which I think the Kings will be getting to the line more because I think they should. without without Herder. And without Lyles and still no Sasha, you should be getting to the line more because your three-point shooting capabilities aren't where they were. They dropped a little bit. So find other ways to score. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And you saw a little bit of it tonight. We've talked about how the game changes when everybody touches the ball. And although you can't quantify it in the Kings net rating, I think that's part of it because like Davion Mitchell tonight, Grant, he stepped right into a three-pointer confident at a clutch time hits it but the same goes for playing this offense style and getting to the line if they're grinding moving the ball their free throw percentage may go up when more people are touching the ball what do you think of this message from uh fox Fox went from mr fourth quarter to mr argue with the officiating you know there's some truth to that i i think i think it's under reported i think it's under analyzed and i think it's fair I think it's very fair. I think it's a good job by you, Arturo. I think you're spot on with that. Hey, I want to tell you uh, about Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital as they are in Auburn, but they serve the foothills, Roseville, and the greater Sacramento area. They are a full-service veterinarian, medicine, dentistry, surgery, and wellness care. Uh, They're dedicated to urgent care. They have advanced internal medicine full surgical care. They have the most modern technology and they are very proud of their pain management protocols for maximizing faster recovery for their surgical and dental patients. Keep Gold Country Veterinary and Hospital in mind the next time your pet needs phenomenal care. That is Gold Country Veterinary and Hospital in Auburn. As good as they are, as good as they are, they couldn't fix the Kings. No, they could not. But I would encourage you to keep Gold Country in mind for yourself, too, if your local emergency room is closed. Trust me. License to uh, practice medicine as a lineman. But based on what he does on uh, all different types of animals, I'm with you. I'd, I'd actually feel pretty confident with that, you know? I would. If I walked into a pre-op and Dr. Griffiths was doing my hips, I'd be like, let's go. How soon? (laughs) All right. Uh, There's really no reason to uh, belabor the point. We can wrap this up and get ready for Orlando. This is an awful night. There's just no other way to say it. It's an awful night for Sacramento. Yeah, it's a it's an awful night on one of the best basketball days of the year. So go enjoy the rest of the night, (laughs) Kings fans. Uh, amen. All right, buddy. Uh, you enjoy the rest of your evening. And to everyone else, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Kings, no beam lit tonight. We'll